What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna go over Apple's newest operating system, iOS 14 on the iPhone. And then we're also gonna cover the top 10 features included in that update. Now let's get started. The first big feature I wanna cover are widgets. So here I'm on my main home page, and if you can swipe to the left, you're gonna see the widget sections. And there's a few different widgets. There's the top one, which is stackable widgets, that there's different widgets stacked together and you can just kind of go through those. They have the individual widgets here. You notice some are smaller, some are kind of medium, and then down here, some are large. You can customize these in any way you want. So if you just hold down here in the middle of the section, you'll see the typical kind of dancing icon. You have the minus where you can delete them, or if you wanna add, come over here to the top right where it has a plus sign. And then you can go here and you can search through all the different widgets they have and add notes, you can do batteries, calendar, clock. So we'll head down here and say we'll go to the weather app. So you can see it comes in small, kind of a medium with a little bit more information. And then there's a large version with a lot more information. So you can choose which size you want depending on how much information you want. So we'll get out of there. So then once you kind of choose all your different widgets here, you can move some of these widgets from the widget page here onto your main pages and mix it in with your other apps. So let's just say I want the battery app to be there. You can move this around. You can put it down here at the bottom. You can put it over here. Any combination you want, you can use that. So you can do it like that. And I'm going to delete that. Now another thing you can do, let's put that battery back in there. Let's go to battery, add widget. It'll throw it back in the empty space. And up here you notice we talked about the stackable widgets. You can create your own stackable list. So like for example, these two say you want to combine them. You can just merge them together like that, and now they're stackable. So as long as they're the same size, now you can stack the medium size together with the mediums, or if you have a bunch of large ones, you can stack the largest together. So you can stack as many as you want. You can stack as many as you'd like, and then move that onto your main page like we did before. Now I'm gonna undo that. And then whenever you're finished, just click Done. You can also edit the stacks if you hold it down, click edit stack. You can then choose what you want to add. You can move them in different, you can move them in different orders, whichever you like. Now another thing you can do, so you have the, so you can go here to standard apps that are down here. Also if there's the third party apps that have availabilities. If you scroll down to the bottom where it says customize, you can come down here and there's third party widgets and they're going to be adding those more and more different companies are going to add them and you can add them to the main widget page or to your main page with your other icons. Click done. The second thing I want to talk about is the app library. So we have all of our apps like normal on different pages, but if you come over to the very end, you'll notice all of your apps are organized in categories. Suggestions, recently added, and then they have the different categories, creative, utilities, entertainment, social. Now you'll notice there's larger apps here, so like the Amazon is larger. If you click on it, that'll open up Amazon. But here on the smaller ones, if you click on that, that'll show you all the different apps inside this little library. Now these are organized by Apple. You can't change them, you can't change the names. This is Apple's default app library organization. Now you can search in here. You can type in here and search whatever you like, or you can scroll down and they're all alphabetical. So you can find them that way. Now you have a couple different options as far as download. So when you download apps, you can download them and they usually show up here on your homepage, but you can change it to where they automatically download here in the library so you can keep your pages nice and clean. But if you decide you wanna keep it to where they continue to download on the main page, go to settings, go to settings, go to home screen, and you're gonna choose when it says newly downloaded apps. I have mine set to add to home screen because I wanna see where it is and then I can decide if I wanna put it in there or not or you can have them go straight away into the app library by clicking that. I prefer mine to go on the main page and then I can sort them out later. Another nice feature is you notice I have a bunch of pages here. And say I don't wanna see them all the time. Say the last two pages are just for work. If I hold down here to manipulate, if I hold these down to make them dance and edit, if I click this bottom row here, it'll show me all the different pages I have. So we're gonna say those last two pages are for my work and I don't wanna see them on the weekend. I can just uncheck those and then go back and if I click off it, now I notice I only have two pages and then it goes to the app library. 
You can always get those back, just hold it so they all start dancing again. Hit that bottom one and then reattach them when it's Monday and you need those apps for work again. And then you have, and then once we click off, you have all four of them there if you need to access them. Now another nice feature that's new with iOS 14 is for phone calls. Normally when you get a phone call, if you're searching the internet and you get a phone call, the entire screen comes up with the person calling and it says answer or not. But now with the new feature, if you're browsing the internet, the phone call will come up just with a banner and the banner will say, you know, Dave is calling and it'll have his information. Then you can click on it and expand it or choose to accept or decline. And that's a nice little feature. So you don't have to stop what you're doing every single time someone calls. So the next feature I want to talk about is the picture in picture feature. So say we're watching Apple TV, we'll open this up and we'll kind of play this documentary here. And say we're watching this and you want to do something else. You can either swipe it up and it'll stay here in the corner and you can move it down here to the bottom. You can move it wherever you like so that you can access different applications or go on the internet or text message if you need to. And this will still continue to play. You can also swipe it here to the left and it'll just play the audio. So you're not going to see the video, but if you're listening to a podcast or something that you can swipe it there and you can still listen to it while you do other things. And then you can bring it back out. You can double tap on it, make it larger, double tap, make it, make it smaller. And that way you can still access other items. So that's the great picture and picture. And you can also do this on FaceTime. So if you're FaceTiming someone, you can shorten it up and make them smaller if you need to access information and you can still see that person. And so it doesn't show that pause symbol on their side when they're watching you. So you can continue to watch them and talk to them in addition to do the other items you need to. So picture and picture is a great, great feature. Another great feature too is some people like to use different web browsers or mail services. So for example, if you like to use Chrome instead of Safari, I have Chrome downloaded here. So all you need to do is go here to the uh, settings and then just scroll down to where you can find the Chrome app. So I have Chrome here. And then right here where it says change default browser app, I have it set to Safari. You can just change it to Chrome and then you're good to go. But I do like Safari, so I'm gonna leave it there. And the same thing with the mail applications. If you don't like to use the default Apple web, if you want to use maybe Gmail app or something like that, you can set the same thing. And as of now, this is just for internet browser and mail, but I'm sure going forward, they're going to have more things released. Now, another big feature I like a lot on this new update is the privacy location. A lot of times when you send a photo or you send something, it can, it can show those people the exact location of where you are. So you can do instead of the exact location, so they can literally find your street address, you can do it where you do general information. So if you live in Los Angeles, it'll just say generally Los Angeles. Or if you're in Manhattan, it'll just say New York or Manhattan. So it won't give your specific pinpoint GPS address if you want to keep it more private. And you can change the setting for each individual app, whether it's photos or maps or anything. So we want to change that is head into settings. So let's click settings and let's head down here to privacy and then go to location services. So this will access the location for all your different apps. So say you want to change it. So let's say for Best Buy, where it says precise location. If I don't want this app knowing my precise location, I'm going to turn that off and it's going to just do a general location, a general area, a town, a city, that sort of thing. So like I said, if you want to be more private about certain things, I think specifically with like photos and things like that, if you turn that off and that way that photo is not identified with your exact location. So if you're uploading on the internet and someone can download it and find out your exact GPS. I'll turn that back on. So that's a nice little safety feature. Another safety feature I like too is when the camera is on or the microphone is on, there is now a green and orange yellow light. So let me turn this camera on right now. So you can see this is just the plant in front of me. If you'll notice up here on the right hand side, there's that little green dot. That is just letting you know that the camera is being accessed. So if you feel like you're online and you feel like for some reason your camera might be recording from a hacker or something online, you'll notice that the green light will indicate that that camera is running. And or if there's one right next to it, it'll be an orange dot and that indicates that the microphone is being used and recording. So that's a nice little safety feature I like. And now onto a, fun, a couple fun different things. So in the text message app, they have a new feature when you type things and you actually, so say you wanna send an emoji and you know, you go through and all of a sudden it's like, oh, where was that emoji? I can't seem to find that, you know, weird, funny one or whatever. There's a new feature now called search emoji. If you type in here and just say you're looking for a bike. 
and then it filters all the bikes in that group. So then you can just choose from there. So you're not sitting there searching over and over and over. So that's another great little fun feature. There's also another nice shortcut that I like that you can now access to double tap or triple tap the back of the phone to do a shortcut. So for example, so let's go back here to the settings and let's head down to where you see accessibility under the home screen. And then if you go to the physical and motor, tap touch and go all the way to the bottom. There's a new thing called back tap. You click it on, you have double tap and you have triple tap. So let's just say double tap. You can make a little shortcut for that. So for example, say I want to do a screenshot whenever I double tap. So let me pull this over. I'm going to pick the phone up and now I'm going to double tap the back. And it just took a screenshot. So you can change it to different settings and have different shortcuts. But you can do a double tap and you can also do a triple tap. And those are some of the newest features inside of Mac's new operating system, iOS 14. And there's a lot more smaller features. There's tons to explore. Download it, play around with it, and you're going to enjoy it. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. And if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel. That being said, have a great day. Later. Later.